the theoretical uh, or speculative uh, historical discussion on the meaning and uh, the place of uh, religious and political fundamentalism in uh, American public life, uh, I would like to focus uh, during uh, our class uh, this week on more uh, practical uh, cases, uh, namely on uh, uh, the recent uh, document issued by the Congregation of Doctrinal Faith uh, concerning uh, the possibility or not of blessing of the same-sex uh, couple by a priest and uh, on the case uh, which uh, happened uh, many years ago, but is uh, nevertheless uh, very relevant uh, because uh, is linked to the presence of religious uh, symbol in public sphere, uh, classrooms, uh, uh, public offices, uh, etc., etc. Uh, it is uh, known as uh, Laozi uh, versus uh, Italy um, co uh, case, uh, which was uh, which happened uh, many years ago, and uh, uh, the solution of the court uh, of European court is uh, very uh, very significant and is showing uh, something more than just uh, a solution of this uh, concrete case. If you heard about uh, uh, is uh, good, uh, if not, uh, I think it will be very useful to uh, remember this uh, case. And in both uh, is not so much uh, uh, the concrete uh, statements or uh, evaluation of a certain aspect of uh, Catholic doctrine or the court uh, solutions, but uh, more importantly, I would like to treat it as a departure point for a debate how uh, and in to which extent uh, debate uh, concerning uh, religious and political fundamentalism has an ethical and moral dimension. In other words, uh, how far uh, rights of um, uh, everyone uh, are in, involved in uh, such uh, cases, uh, which uh, usually are very uh, theoretical and distant, but uh, could be that uh, uh, they will have a very direct impact on the life of uh, concrete uh, people. In case of uh, Vatican document is uh, the problem how LGBT communities are perceived by members of the Catholic Church. And in case of Laozi versus Italy, case uh, how uh, uh, the presence of religious symbols can uh, affect uh, someone who, for example, don't uh, belong to a majority religious uh, group. As usual, you will find uh, on uh, our platform uh, plenty of material to read. Uh, first of all, I encourage you to read uh, a document issued by this uh, uh, Vatican uh, congregation, which is not very long, but you know, you will have your own uh, opinion reading uh, this uh, uh, text, the source of uh, public debate or media debate. Uh, let us have our own opinion based on the uh, knowledge of uh, this the, this uh, Vatican document, and uh, also what is unusual in the same uh, uh, document, you have also a commentary written uh, by someone from the congregation. So it's already in this fact that the Vatican are. Uh, uh, publishing a certain document is, and is in the same time commenting it, like feeling that perhaps uh, uh, not everybody will understand it uh, as uh, 
uh, the Vatican or Pope Francis who signed it uh, intended to be understood. And in fact, uh, everywhere you can read uh, some commentaries, and I send you two uh, com commentaries from, as you already know, uh, National Catholic Reporter, this progressive Catholic uh, newspaper, uh, where on the one hand, the uh, one author is trying to uh, understand the circumstances, the context in which this document was issued, why it was issued in this uh, precisely uh, moment. And the second article is uh, the editorial, the comment uh, issued by the group of uh, chief editors of uh, a Catholic uh, uh, National Catholic Reporter, where you uh, will find a strong uh, evaluation of this document, particularly uh, you will find a, a series of very positive um, comments uh, made by uh, Pope Francis in the last eight years concerning LGBT communities and uh, how to uh, reconcile, how to combine this positive uh, uh, expressions of uh, Pope Francis with this extremely uh, negative uh, a document of the Vatican, and they use the word hypocrite. And uh, I found it uh, very well founded, uh, with good arguments, and I think that we, uh, with all our sympathy, or from my side, for Pope Francis, for what he wrote till now, what he did, uh, in exactly this case is an example of uh, Vatican hypocrisy, because you say one thing and you do another thing. Uh, so this is uh, one case, and the second, uh, probably less uh, well known, uh, is uh, elaborated by a Polish uh, scholar, uh, lawyer, and philosopher, uh, Professor Beata um, Polanowska uh, Sigulska from Jagiellonian University. Uh, she wrote uh, several articles on uh, liberalism since uh, she was a uh, uh, friend of Isaiah Berlin and wrote with him a book on unfinished dialogue and uh, a lot uh, about liberalism. And exactly, she wrote also on this uh, uh, particular case, uh, Laozi versus Italy. And this article is, is longer than this short uh, uh, pieces concerning uh, the Vatican document. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, if you are interested in what is going on in the modern contemporary debate, and how we can confront the problem of fundamentalism, uh, political or religious, with the good arguments. I think it's worth it to, to, to read these 20 pages of very clearly uh, written and with good arguments, uh, uh, defense of um, uh, of, of uh, plural, uh, pluralism as a, as a value which we have to, to cherish, which we have to defend, which we have to defend also in the moment when fundamentalists are trying to impose their own view on certain basic uh, values of our modern life. The, the, the article was published uh, not so recently, in 2019, and is entitled The Crucifix Dispute and Value Pluralism. Uh, and uh, this is uh, written, uh, published in the German newspaper, and probably this is the reason why 
Polanowska Sigulska started with a very recent discussion in Germany and concretely in Bavaria, where the president of this state, Bavaria, introduced crosses, crucifixes into public buildings in 2018. And you will be surprised uh, that uh, who was uh, uh, oppo who opposed this decision was uh, no less than the cardinal, uh, the bishop of Munich, uh, Reinhard Marx, um, who explained uh, that from a religious point of view, from Catholic point of view, this decision to impose the presence of religious symbol of Christian symbols in the public buildings in Bavaria, which is a, a Catholic uh, state, uh, uh, the most Catholic uh, uh, part of uh, the Germany. Nevertheless, uh, Marx, as a religious leader, uh, oppose the politician who tried to impose on the other uh, religious symbol as a as a sign of uh, a cultural identity, and the argumentation of Marx, which was not shared by many priests who were seen uh, cross as as the identity sign for Bavarian people. Nevertheless, this is interesting uh, discussion, and I think we can find many applications also to the debate in, in our own country or in United States, etc. Uh, the second point in this uh, long uh, article is the opinion of the Orthodox Jew, uh, an important lawyer from Washington, uh, from New York, and I think it will be also interesting to uh, to remember uh, this name because he is uh, very important in, in, the, in the debate uh, on the presence of religious values uh, in the public sphere. But what is important that exactly uh, Josef Weiler uh, defended uh, the presence of uh, Christian symbols in public sphere in Europe because, according to him, Europe is a pluralistic country in the modalities of this uh, Christian uh, presence is different. Uh, in the UK, you have a state church, uh, the same in, in the Protestant Scandinavian countries, and so on and so on. But, of course, in the Catholic uh, Italy, a fortiori, uh, more than uh, in other places, of course, the cross uh, should be uh, defended in, in classrooms. And here, this, this is the beginning of debate. Why uh, this Lao Tzu, uh, just to, to mention what is the Lao Tzu, is the Finnish uh, family uh, living in Italy and uh, the mother of teenagers, uh, educated in the secular way, was um, disturbed by the presence of uh, Christian uh, signs in classrooms. She said, and she stood, uh, made this case against the state, um, against Italy, and uh, she asked to remove crosses. And it was at the beginning of, of 2000, 2001 or two. And uh, finally, in 2008, uh, it was issued a um, uh, verdict that they uh, should be removed. But Italy as a state and other supporters, 20 other states, uh, appealed to the same court. And two, two, two years later, in 2011, the final judgment in the Lao Tzu versus Italy uh, verdict was completely different and reversed the, the first judgment 
uh, and all this happened in uh, at, at, uh, of the European Court of, of Human Rights. And uh, what do you think about, uh, please read the, all these texts, and I really hope that we will have a very, a very intense and interesting debate uh, uh, dedicated to the implication, ethical and moral implication of uh, religious and political fundamentalism in public uh, sphere.